Hey everybody, uh, I decided that I just wanted to share something, um, maybe encourage you to check something out, maybe just a recommendation, I guess, in case you're uh, a fan of comics or a fan of just cool shit, alright? So this is one of my favorite artists, um, his name is GP Gianni, um, I think... He mostly goes by GP. Um, unfortunately for us, um, there are only four books currently that are translated in English, which are these four. Um, this one just recently came out. Um, this one before that, and then this kind of, I think, the order of them. Um, and also the order in which I kind of got them. So... I want to talk about him a little bit and just say that he's a good, good dude. Good, good, good dude. You can find him on Instagram also. He's on there and you can see him like work, uh, which is fascinating because his style is so interesting. Um, it's very scratchy, but it's very solid. Uh, so this is the first book I picked up, which is Notes for War. Um, and I just, I saw the cover and I was like, that's a weird shapes for like a face and all this and very kind of loose and opened it up and it was this colors these like i don't know the camera's probably not going to capture it but it's almost like it's a blue green kind of like it's probably gray on the camera um but it's very solid like it's drawn very very well and lots of detail and it's scratchy it's it, it reminds me of uh when people do like sketching of um like urban sketching you can find that under a hashtag urban sketching um when people just go to like someplace like a city and just start sketching and that's what this looks like basically except he just uses it in storytelling and it's his so this this was the first time i ever saw him uh saw any of his art and i was just like intrigued i was like wow this is really interesting um and, and like, I mean, look at that kind of, like, weird, surreal use of war balloons. He does different stuff, um, uh, or similar stuff. This is actually very, like, an old kind of approach. This very, like, long balloon type thing. It's, like, some of the oldest comics or examples of comics um, have this kind of uh, balloon structure. It's very interesting. <laughs> I like that a lot. Sniff! Um... And I never actually even read this book. I just looked through it. I was just like looking through it. Like, I mean, look at that nice detail on that table. It just looks dirty. It looks like all messed up, you know. But you can see everything. It's not like anything is not clear. Um, you know, it's all there. It's just very loose. Uh, it looks like the colors are watercolor. Uh, it's just really cool. Um, so I never even read it. I just literally was just like blown away by the art. And I was like, that's... I got, I got what I wanted from it. I just, I didn't even like think about it really. And, um, so I just, I had the book and then years later I was in Pittsburgh at a store called, um, Copacetic, <laughs> which is one of the, there's the address. If you ever go there, uh, it's one of the most amazing comic book shops in the world. Probably if you ever get a chance stop by it's it's not superhero stuff it's all foreign or indie or like zines like he has bins full of stuff from like mini zine fests and all this other stuff so you can actually go to like a find certain places he's gone and picked up um yeah this is uh the card um but i was there and i was just kind of looking through and i found i saw this book and then I was like, right next to it was this. And I was like, what is this? More. And I had to pick it up. And the style is, again, very, very similar. But this one has uh, different colors, more colors. And uh, I did read this one. This one is actually very weirdly nostalgic for me, I guess. Um, I mean, I think it's it would be for anyone that's ever been in a band. You would probably relate to this comic quite a bit. It's very... It definitely captures that mood of, um, 
having ever been or played with people, um, you know, and never really, it never really working out <laughs> or not working out the way kind of like in the moment think it will. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I like it a lot. But it's a very small story. It's like a very super small, um, I don't know. He's probably referencing a band right here that I, I just don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But um, I really like it. It's a very, it's a very like short, simple story. Um, it reads super fast. And that's one of the things I think, which is why I have to go back to this one. Obviously, I just, I just haven't. Just There's so many things in my pile of things to read. Um, but yeah, very, very, very cool. Uh, I recommend it highly. Um, uh, this is uh, one of the newer things that came out that just like, I think it came out pretty much, like I saw pages from it online and then like very quickly it was here in the US and I was like, wow, that's surprising. Um, Fanographics put it out, which is really nice. So these first two are uh, first, second, um, and then these two are uh, Fanographics. This one, uh, I really like because this is one is literal. This is just black and white, and it's super scratchy, like super super scratchy. Like this is basically what the other books would be without color. But it doesn't feel like I'm like being cheated of anything because it fits the narrative. And as it goes on, you kind of start seeing like. And again, once again, it's like the solid structures, very solid. Like this perspective is good. Like. All these things that matter, you know, like composition, like uh, storytelling, the way he guides you through the story. And then, you know, the characters, like a very well developed, like it's just this. And this, again, this story is like, this is a thick book. Uh, it's like how many pages? I don't know how many pages it is, but it's, it's, it's thick and it reads really fast. There's not a lot of words in it. And it just, like, as I was reading it, I was like, wow, I'm, like, halfway through it. Like, I, I just was surprised how fast it went through. So, like, you know. And I think it's all done with tech pens, like, uh, microns and stuff. It's just, that's what that's what the feel of it is. Very scratchy on paper look. Um, I don't know. I, I really love this book. I love, uh, I, I read it in, like, very quickly. And it's just very... It's like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Uh, again, the story is fairly contained. It's not like, you know, there's nobody saving like a city or anything like that. But like, you know, look, I mean, look at that. That's like so much scratchiness and so much, but so much like volume he's getting from it. So much depth from just how dark he goes with it. You know, it's, he's not, he's not like not giving you, you know, he's putting a lot of effort into this. And then like, you know, he opens it up like the day, day scenes are very open and you know light and then night scenes and he's he's able to because he's doing that he's able to like you know show emphasis <laughs> on things that he really wants you to see right um it's very really nice contrasts just a book that like reads super well and i don't know i'm like I like basically he's one of those artists that I just I, I keep every time I see more of him I'm just like I just fall more in love with him um and his style and his approach it's very like I mean so any if anyone has ever drawn or tried to draw um scenes like of uh rain at all it's very difficult like how do you how do you really show it how do you show that movement right like it's it can become a mess really quickly, and, and I think he's he's doing a great job here. Like it's just it feels like rain, you know. It feels like rain, and it's like a simple approach. He's just putting down lines, but like you know, it's pages and pages of like showing that it's raining this whole time. Meanwhile, he's telling the story underneath the whole time, and so the rain becomes part of the story, and you're just like you notice you like kind of like you ch you're as you're reading it, it just becomes part of it, you know, and then, you know, rain, rain, and then the character goes inside, you know, it's just, and he's still, like, showing a little bit, like, water down here, you know, on the floorboards, 
it's just very well done. I, you know, I love, I mean, I, you know, obviously I love the dark scenes because they're just, you know, but like the detail, it's all solid structure and it looks really good. Again, like that urban sketching look that lots of people uh, will do, but he's, you know, using it as just to like tell stories. It's, it's awesome. It's very, very cool. Um, Yeah, and then, you know, he has, like, some pages that are very, like, open like this. Like, he's, you know, he's not, and he's not padding time. He's just, like, slowing things down. Like, he's, that's the point of, like, long panels with little going on. It's, like, he's kind of slowing things down a little bit. He's, like, giving you space. He's showing how kind of huge something is or how, you know, you know, like, he's showing how alone they are, right? Stuff like that. Um... So, you know, and there's pages like this, which are, like, are more, again, like, he's setting a mood here. He's, like, because uh, there's a whole part of the story that's about uh, this notebook that the kids find. And they're trying to read it, but they can't read. And so all he's kind of showing this notebook to what it might look like to somebody that can't read it. It's just scribbles, right? Because you're looking at it and you don't know what the hell it says. And it's just, like, you're, like, you know, if you were cynical, you could be, like, oh, he's just taking up pages, but he doesn't have to because he draws all of these. He's just, you know, it's not like he's doing it specifically for to set the mood, to like set that feeling. So you kind of get in the mindset of the characters. Um, yeah, again, like that's that open scene, you know. Um, it's just very well done. I, I, I love this book a lot. Um, it's... So, and there's almost no information in it. It's basically like, it just like starts with like, you know, that. And then it just goes into the story. And that's it. That's all you get. You don't get like, him like, in the back there's nothing either. You know, there's like, it's just like, I mean, you can read the back of it or whatever online. But like, um, very, very cool stuff. Um. So, also, because I see most of the stuff online, I saw this online a long time ago, and my wife actually got me this book for, like, Christmas or something? I don't know, so one of the one of those holidays where people give you something, like a birthday or something? I don't know. Um, but I remember, like, getting it and being super excited, and this is the um, Italian version, and I love this book because this one is, like, kind of all of his tricks in one, um... And this, like, so there's, like, black and white stuff. There's his, like, super lush, super, super lush watercolors. Um, but he's using the different styles to, like, do different things, right? And uh, I, I couldn't read the story, obviously, so I'm just, like, but I love the look of it. And so I saw pages, and so, like, this is, you know, this is, like, watercolor. That's digital color. <laughs> It's, and it's, you know, it's all, all the things, you know, all the things that somebody might use in comics, but he's doing it all in one book. And, um, like, I mean, that's just luscious. I love this. I love this panel. It's just it's so good. Um, you know, his watercolors are just so, so vivid when he wants them to be, and so, like, dull when he wants them to be. It's It's great. You know, and then there's, like, stuff like this where he's, like, having this conversation going on but it's very very loose like very super loose like even looser than anything else he's done you know it's all that's all that's all on that page right it's like so he's making creative decisions you know he's like and then there's it goes into this war scene it looks like world war one um and it's just like i don't know it's It's just kind of a, it's, it's great. It's like each, each panel could be a piece of art. You know, it's like, it's not, he's not. Yeah. So this, this, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the, those kind of word balloons that like back in the day used to be a thing. Like they used to actually like just take the word balloon all the way exactly to where who was talking, um, you know, like that, like with the words getting cut off because you can't quite hear everything. You hear some of it, but you don't quite hear everything. You know, if you're like over listening to somebody. Um, 
You know, I, I love these kind of choices he's making where he's like, you know, like this person, this is just white, you know, like it's just, um, yeah, so this book is just like everything that I love about him in one book. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a piece of art. As far as I'm concerned, I would put it on a wall if I could like, you know, trick him into selling it to me for the $10 that I have. Um, but yeah, just so like warm and just, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen like watercolor shows where people like do like these like uh, landscape watercolors. Um, I love that kind of stuff. I love like David Salmon and, and stuff like people that do that kind of stuff where it's just like, and it's, but he's, you know, he's doing it in a comic book and it doesn't feel like super over labored. He's like being loose and like, you know, just very, very nice. And, and. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this book. Um, just like, I love that. I mean, that's uh, on the cover. Of the, this is the American version that came out um, just recently. And so I can finally actually read the book. But yeah, like, I mean, like, that's just, it's gorgeous. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed by it because I know how hard watercolor can be. Um, you know, like... It's so dull now. Like, he's now he's going so dull and looks like, you know, like this dead tree in the middle of nothing, you know? Totally looks like what you would think of, like, a war scene, right? Where it's, like, almost no color. Everything seems dull. And you just kind of, like, you can kind of look through this book and you just kind of get a vibe of it, you know? Yeah, I love the... I love it, the way he's doing the ears, where he's, like... Which is, would be, like, the light coming through the ears, so they look a little red, you know? I like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just really nice. Like, so dramatic here, you know, with the shadows and stuff. It's just very, I don't I I, I like it a lot. Yeah, I so I, I've not read this book yet. I've just, but I finally have a version that I can read, but. You know, I've been, like, admiring it for a while now. Um, I highly recommend basically anything he does. He has lots of books, but, like I said, only, like, I think four of them are translated. Yeah. Uh, or Gianni Panciotti. Uh, that's his name. I said GP Gianni, but I think it's Gianni Panciotti. Um, yep, so, very cool. Very, uh, highly recommend it, and this is the American version. Um Una storia, or one story, and um, it's it looks almost as good, basically. Like, the colors are, are just a little bit different, maybe. Just a little bit. It could be the paper. Um, I think it's pretty similar. It's a pretty similar. I think the, this paper is a little smoother, maybe. But um, it's really close. Like, you'll, you'll still get the same kind of feel from it. Um, you know, it's... It's pretty great. Um, so I'm going to at some point go through and try to read this. Um, it seems really kind of weird and like, it seems like it's going all the way all over place through time, like back and forth through time. Um, so, but I'm totally looking forward to it. So I want to just recommend him as like an artist to check out and just like very cool stuff um, art wise, even if you're like not. And the reading, like, the ones that I've read are super easy to read. Like, his writing style is, like, straightforward, but, like, interesting. It's not boring. Um, but while I'm here, I figured I'd also recommend one more thing. Uh, this was, uh, I found it because this artist I follow who, uh, he used to do backgrounds for Ren and Stimpy. Um, I think is I think online he's now going by William Ray. But uh, I think when he was doing Ren and Stimpy stuff, he was under Bill Ray, like W-R-A-Y. Uh, and he posted a quote from uh, Albert Camus, uh, Camus, or Camus, uh, book called The Plague. And uh, I've started listening to it, and um, I love it. 
<laughs> it's so appropriate right now. I think it's a 1948 um, came out. But um, I don't have the actual book, but I do have this other book by him, um, which I need to check out after after I finish listening to the audiobook. I'm gonna actually read this. I picked this up, and um, where is it? Uh, the Plague again, 19 La, La Peste, 1948. Um, the Plague is really good. It's I'm about halfway through it right now, and it's very much like it feels so appropriate right now. It's so it's basically about a town um, in, I think it's set in France, and it's just like about a town that uh, basically a version of the plague shows up, and at first like people aren't believing it and buying it, and they're not, they don't think it's happening, and then they like, like basically it starts with a bunch of rats dying, and it's I guess it's kind of also like an allegory for basically fascism coming in, um, what I kind of gathered, but you can also just read it on the surface level of it being like people are just not taking it seriously and then you know at some point it becomes so serious that they can't ignore it and then it goes into like the psyche of what happens to people when like a whole town is just locked down and people can't leave and they i don't know it's just very appropriate for right now um and it's very it's it's written really well i actually just found the audiobook on youtube um, there's two versions of it. I, uh, went with the one with the guy who sounds older. I just, it sounds better to me, like, as far as just, I mean, but you figure out what, you know, I'm guessing probably, um, uh, what is it, Audible, whatever, has it. I just, I, I have a, I've, I've been trying to cut off my self from Amazon in every way, and the Audible is part of that, um. Uh, Thing. So I've been trying to not uh, figure out other ways. Um, there are free services that do audiobooks, and they're hit and miss, obviously. Um, but I don't know. It's like you can go through libraries and stuff too and get that kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. It's yeah. Amazon is just it, is really bothering me. It's really bothering me that Amazon right now is making a fuckload of money, and um, you know, and people I know are really struggling and I'm struggling in many ways and it's you know it's not a joke it's it's fucked up it's all over the world it's but it's really bad here if you're not in the U.S. it's really fucking bad um you can see it you can see it like on the streets there are more and more homeless people um and I don't live in a big town but there are more and more homeless people and um it's just gonna be anyways so yeah The Plague by Albert Albert, Albert Camus. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but I assume he's, I think, I believe he's a Frenchie. One of those French people. I guess he got the Nobel Prize of Literature in 57. Yeah, so pretty cool. Um, I'm going to check this out at some point, but yeah, The Plague. Check out The Plague. Uh, find the audiobook on YouTube. Uh, I... I couldn't recommend it more. It's very good. And obviously GP. All right. Bye.